Good morning, everyone. This is John, and uh, we are starting uh, today is Tuesday. The, if I'm not mistaken, uh, today is um, oops. Let me double check this here. Hold on a second. The record button did not start. Okay, uh, here we go. Good morning. And uh, so basically, folks, what we're looking at doing, and today being Tuesday the 4th of February, uh, we had a, a significant decline in the markets uh, yesterday morning based on a little spooky bad economic numbers, and the market accelerated to the downside on its own volition. Um, when we look at the advanced decline, and I, the first thing I want to do is say, okay, what did the technical damage the market in, um, internals look like. What we were looking for was a move back to 1750 or so and we got that plus a little bit more down to 1732 and a quarter and so now um, looking at the market from a, uh, a technical perspective and looking at the volume levels according to our on balance volume indicator. While the sell-off was uh, significant we were warning about a two to three week correction in the market. Uh, today's what we call Tuesday turnaround and when we take a look at from a, a level from um, with the market internals advanced decline, we see we definitely have a potential for divergence in the market right now brewing. We have lower um, lower lows in price, but not in the um, advanced decline reading. So this to me could be a, a temporary short-term bottom in the market. And the next level of major support would have been this old high this old low and might equate to this old house right right in there so um, that I think is a and we talked yesterday a little bit about the support coming in there and not to bottom pick from a day trade perspective because things can you know continue to drive momentum lower so hopefully that was one uh, good solid bit of information now what do we do for today well the, the, we do we do see a potential for a building of uh, bullish convergence. And we take a look at just the S&Ps, uh, we can see that we also have that same setup uh, almost manifesting with the NASDAQ. When we go over to the rest of the index, and I think that's what's important, is just let's take a look and see how uh, what sector is getting uh, crushed the most, so to speak. And as we can see, we come down here and we look at the, uh, uh, the Russell. While we did make lower closing prices, we did just slightly dip down to this area of uh, normal uh, advanced decline line levels and so with that said this is an area of some pretty strong support and we can see that right there on the charts old level of support area in here area in here uh, take these two days this was an equal and opposite but yet if you take a look at this this level this line in the sand I mean it's it's starting to uh, show up a little bit more evidence uh, that this is old uh, swing points of an old high and old low if you took out these two days right here if you just took out if you covered up these two bars with your finger then you would see that you had support here support in there support in here so this is a value area no doubt about it the question begs how much of a recovery do we get and so if we're going to look for any uh, further downside erosion first thing that we have to look for is to see if there is no bounce number one number two we have to look to see if that if we do get a bounce is it on a sustainable and sizable volume and did we get a pop-up in the advanced decline and we'll find that out today but today being Tuesday turnaround the fact that we're in a support zone area uh, we should get at least a nice little sharp rally and I would suspect that we're gonna see a rally in the S&P's minimum level over the next couple days and it'll be tricky today because after yesterday you just I just unless you get one of these down and then right back in your face and I don't think we're gonna see that today I think today gets a little grind choppiness because there's still an, an over acceleration of bearishness in in the market right now everyone's now starting to panic they look at the VIX and uh, you, you take a look at some of these stocks and you go oh my god they're really getting crushed I should start to worry now so that psychological impact is going to without a doubt I think we're going to see 
uh, uh, more of a choppy range today, but I think over the by the end of this week, if we're anywhere in the S and P's close to um, seventeen uh, sixty to sixty five zone, then we're going to go and probably next week look to test back up to the eighteen hundred level. So what does that mean? How do we trade this thing? Well, first off, if you take a look at this uh, low right here, seventeen fifty four, we blasted through. 1754 to 61, we broke through those lows, and so those old lows are now going to act as a resistance point. So for me today, I think you've got two-sided trading that you can look at. Do not, on a day like today, buy a breakout. So let's take a look at my multiple time and say, okay, let's look at some markets here and see what we got to look at. All right, so... In the S&Ps, interesting how yesterday we said, man, this market needs to get above 52, and then we lowered that number and said the market needs to get above that 42 handle, and uh, that's just what we've done. And we break out that last conditional 42, as you can see, let's, uh, we can now get this swing high up here. As soon as it broke out above that, we're, we're sitting here in an area that the market would want to expand to the upside. But I think looking at the 30 and the 60 minutes, expand this up for you. With the 60 minute in a buy, you had a 60 in a buy and the market barely went anywhere. You had a 60 in a buy, but this time you had a convicted uh, long range candle that engulfed and in fact closed above these prior highs. So. First off, if this market is going to see any traction to the upside short covering, you definitely do not want to see the low of the 60-minute candle taken out. That low right here, 1739. So 39, 38 and 3 quarters, 38 and a half, let's just say 38 and a half. 38 and a half is going to be kind of a critical number that we don't want to see uh, the market come back down. Because if you do take that out, Over time, if you just ran, it's it's kind of like a coincidental uh, effect between a trend line against these lows. That would be one trend line there against the 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 uh, major lows, and this would be kind of like a trend line against the average of the lows. So if we come over here, you notice that in time, if you break 1739, you're going to start to break some moving average levels. So I think personally the market chops around a little bit and stays in a range, and my my belief is that the range is going to be somewhere around like like in in this area for the rest of the day. I could be wrong, but I think that this you know there's always that chance of being wrong. But unless we get su significant volume uh, up to this market, it's gonna it's gonna be a hard climb back to the top. It's gonna be a very hard climb. So. Once we break out of last conditional change candles, like this was an example here, here's the last conditional change. You got a pop and a buy signal, and the market showed some sizable, it showed, a, it showed an uptrend, right? So once it breaks a last conditional change candle low with a sell signal, the market went down. We just don't want to catch falling knives. So now with that said, this is a last conditional change candle right here. We don't want to see the low taken out. So here's what you're going to see. Uh, from a standpoint of support and resistance today. Obviously, we're going to have the upside, uh, which is around 52. And then after that, you got that swing low right there will offer uh, a pretty significant resistance spot. So if you take a look at all these levels, starting from that one to this one to that one, and extend that down. In time today, this is going to be your overhead resistance. So it starts at about 57 up to 61, that zone of resistance. 57 to 61. Downside support is going to be between 39 and 41. If we break below 39, you don't want to see us take out that last conditional change candle. Now, let's go look at 
daily pivots on a day like yesterday will they help us out typically when you get long range days no they don't help you out but in this case take a look at what the daily pivot is we did a little quick study here um, and and said gee we got 57 to 61 as a major resistance and we had old chart resistance at 52 and now today we have this little resistance at around 51 so the first level we got daily pivot at 51 that's going to probably offer a little headway headwinds there that people are going to have a hard time forcing their pop in their head but if you pop over that area then your next level target upside is between 57 and 61 so that that's a, a at least if you get above this daily resistance then guess what you got you know a, as you can tell you got anywhere between a 6 and you know uh, 10 point uh, move to the upside to test this next layer of resistance. What else do we look at? Well, coincidentally, let's uh, let's heighten our awareness to that these lows that I drew in. I said between 57 and 61. Interesting, we have a blue moving average with a value at 62 and a half. So look at 62 and a half in time, that moving average, it will move lower. So you're going to have a moving average, which has nothing to do with these three lows. You have a moving average and these three lows all converging at about this level right in here. That's where you could see there's going to be some uh, overhead resistance. So if you do get a pop in the market uh, and you, you catch a good setup to get long, then you want to watch for that overhead resistance uh, to be a target area uh, for uh, an upside stall. In other words, the market gets there, it'll probably stall. Now, going forward for the rest of this week, we now have a new last conditional change candle. And it's 1783 and three quarters. And it was yet the high, which is above yesterday's, yesterday's high, and both moving averages. So from a, a standpoint, is this market going to turn? I think A, stochastics came from an overbought to an oversold territory. B, um, we got to see if we're going to get an upturn in the market. But more importantly, look what this green line is. That's our monthly pivot support. So I think the market's going to stall in here. We got more today. I'm more of a buyer than a seller um, as long as we hold above that 39 level based on the market internals the advanced decline analysis based on the monthly pivot support and the fact that we did take out that 30 minute last conditional change I'm more prone to be uh, on the long side today now that the smoke is kind of cleared all right so there's there's areas that we want to focus in on for the ES today um, and now let me go over to crude oil All right, well, the first thing that we're going to see is uh, resistance coming in at 97.53. Uh, this is a 60-minute chart. The daily chart looks, you know, it's not giving me a whole lot of information here. We're still in a buy signal. We're in a seasonally strong period of time, and we're in kind of a, a, a choppy range. We have overhead resistance at the daily moving averages, and we have a daily pivot resistance and a three-period pivot point resistance at 97.51. So I would suggest... I would share with you 97, let's call it 97.50 area. 97.50, we would look for shorter term uh, sell signals, a low closed OG, something of that nature up near that resistance point. Um, if we blast through, and here's the next key, you see this, this was a PPS sell signal. It's also a, a last conditional change. In addition, if you take a look at a trend line, If this resistance, if this resistance does not hold and you get above there and then you get above this high, which is 97.75, then, so you have two ways to look at this. Look for sell signals at 97.50. If the market's truly bearish, now think of the logic. If the market's truly bearish, we should respect the person's pivot indicator, which shows lower highs and lower lows. Does everyone, you see that? All right. 
Now, if the market's going to be truly respecting this little downtrend, we should not take out that last conditional change candle because if we do take out this resistance and that downtrend line and we take out 97.75, that level right in here, now we've got a higher high. And the odds favor the fact you'll probably go back once you break out of that level to test right into this zone in here, which is around 98 and a quarter, 98.25, something like that. So that's about a 50 cent move there. We should respect, if the market's truly bearish, overhead resistance. So watch for short-term sell signals up against that. The first test of resistance generally gives you a decent setup. Okay. Gold. Gold, very similar pattern to what we've been seeing uh, even in, in with the crude oil. I mean, it went up and it's been choppy and sloppy in here. Gold, in, with bullish news, can't manage to rally. I can't imagine what's going to happen to bearish news. I have no change in the analysis on gold. Uh, once we break below this uh, level, then we've got, as the arrow points, you break below this level, this last conditional change, and you have a new last conditional change in here. If you close and break below that low of that last conditional change candle, I, I think Katie bar the door. We've got some uh, downside issue. The volume on the rally, as you can see, does the market try to rally? Then it broke. Then it tried to rally again, and it's got no volume ahead of the rally. On the other side of the coin, it's got no volume on the downside, and that can all change. We had gone from a a little overbought condition to a little oversold condition, so we're just in no man's land. You still want to focus in on uh, watch for breaks below this level in here. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. And this low close doji is still in effect as well as this PPS sell signal. On the upside, so when you can say, well, John, uh, when, when would you throw in the towel and say you're wrong? Well, we need to see a close above that last conditional change candle and that PPS sell signal. That bar is kind of important. Um, it's been actually, if you notice in the last three days, prices open close relationship has stayed within the range of that red bar right there. So if we trade back above that area, then you got some upside movement coming, okay? And that level is 1267.80. You can round up and say 12, um, I don't know, just makes, make your life simple, 1270, all right? So uh, Saturday, Ted's asking a question that's irrelevant to our daily outlook. And, and Ted, the funny thing is, I'm going to answer this for you. Um, GLD has a delayed reaction. It has a seasonal weakness at the end of the month, not the beginning of the month. It has a delayed reaction. So uh, we actually, you should, if we get the recording, Ted, take the time to watch Saturday's event because we went through a nice little, I don't know if you were there, but we went through a really nice uh, example of where gold peaks out, but the miners tend to follow later, okay? And it's the same thing with the seasonal buy. Gold tends to bottom out in, Ju in, in uh, July, and the gold miners catch up to it in August. So there's about a month lag time between the turnaround from gold prices to GLD or GDX, okay? Now, here's the thing, Ted. Um, GLD is an ETF that trades off of the futures. So you want to, when you're doing ETFs, if especially it's commodity related, use the information on the commodities. There's overnight action. You don't trade GLD 24 hours, but you do the gold futures. So you definitely want to watch and follow uh, the futures. If you're using USO, if you're using UNG, then follow crude oil and follow net gas. That'll give you a big, big uh, uh, advantage in the marketplace. But take t Ted, without a doubt, take the time and go over that that uh, chart that we um, that the the uh, session that we did Saturday. I was a little bit more coherent too. No pun intended. Um, all right, so now let me move over here real quick because this is kind of exciting. We did a, a nice little uh, uh, relative strength. Let's hurry, 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 because we're running out of time. Too much to talk about. I'm just going to run through with you guys and take a look. As you can see, uh, the strawberry um, is um, XLU. It's been the leader. 
every sector is down except for even though we saw a little bit of a sell-off, the uh, healthcare took a, a dive for the first time uh, this month going ne uh, negative but the utility sector is still positive, so that's still kind of defensive. We didn't want to watch, and tomorrow I'll share with you uh, what these uh, sectors and see if we get um, some of these sectors starting to outperform. You want to watch to see when they go and cross over the positive line. That's when you'll probably see more money being thrown at them. Let's take a look real quick here at um, the condition of the market. Uh, the McClellan Oscillator, without a doubt, without a doubt, is in oversold territory. And when we get into levels like this, that's what that black line is for. Uh, when we get the McClellan Oscillator down in that level, typically it shows that the market is significantly oversold. So we could see and we should be expecting a little, you know, it's going to be either a dead cat bounce or a two to three uh, day rally. And then we'll see what the condition is of that rally. Because you know how this market is. Uh, I mean, you're bearish one day, bullish one day, you're bearish the next, it's the Armageddon, it's the end of the world, and the next day everyone's back to being bullish. Uh, sentiment changes very quickly in this business. So uh, as it is right now, I would say that with this reading in the McClellan Oscillator, we are in a little bit of oversold territory, and there might be some a, a little bounce coming in the market that supports our technical work that we did with the um, uh, uh, S&Ps. So looking at the spread relationship between the NASDAQ and the spiders, uh, the NASDAQ, it's interesting how we see that little hook uptick right here. And uh, with the um, S&Ps, you're going to also see that the market kind of turn around in here. We got a little bit on the oversold territory. And looking at the spread relationship between NASDAQ and the S&Ps, uh, while we've made newer lows, we have not taken out these levels as well. We were warning about a potential correction, and we got that weekly sell signal. We said, I'm looking for a two- to three-week correction. It might last going into maybe Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we stated this last week. And so we, we got the only thing is that we didn't get right was the market went down a little bit further than we thought, and that's okay. And that makes better uh, buying opportunities if you're looking at a longer-term picture. If you're just day trading and swing trading, I think it's very important to notice that in here, we're, we're getting dangerously close to an oversold or a at least a situation where we could see a spike to the upside. Now, let's take a look at knob spreads. Okay, so we talked yesterday about how the bonds outperformed and, and surpassed their levels from October, but the notes didn't. We got the knob spread yesterday up to, I think that spread went to about 8 on an intraday basis, I'm going to say 820. This is a daily chart, so it's only showing you where it closed at on an end of day. But on an intraday basis, it was either 819 or 820, something like that. Um, there we go, 819, and now we're at 807. So someone had asked me yesterday, would I be selling futures? And if you sold futures, you took probably more heat on the trade. If you sell the knob spread, you take less heat on the trade. You have less inherent risk overnight. And uh, yeah, while your profit, remember, uh, your pr if you got into this thing, you know, as and I'm sure some people did jump into it, even though I, uh, you know, we were talking about it. As far as a professional who would scale into a trade here, um, you know, if you even did take that trade, let me tell you something. You're, you know, comfortably, yeah, you would have made more money in the bonds. Uh, bonds are trading at 34.10. But you had, you know, a lot of risk that you could see uh, for the bonds with that leverage versus looking at a controlled, contained move, and the knob spread still offered, you know, a decent little move. I mean, every tick is thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents. So now, what am I looking for in the knob spread? I think in here, the market very nicely has showed its hands. We did some good analysis, and again, we were looking for this level to hold. On what I want to see. So now we have a new level, and we've got our so this is a level of resistance. What I want to see now on it on it either um, sixty minute or an end of day. At least let me see a the trend kind of change a little bit get the market down, come back, and show me. As you can see, a lot of times you get these like double tops in the market, market rallies, breaks, comes back, 
and then the market pulls down. So I want to see a double, kind of a double top in the market over time, significant time, and then I'll be looking at that spread. There's a lot of room to the downside in this spread. Trust me on this one. All right, and uh, I think right now it's definitely showing its hand as it's it's weakening as equities will rise. So just like the chart I shared with you guys, uh, when the Dow goes down, the bonds go up. When the bonds go um, when when the the bonds go down, stocks go up. So the knob spread is still one that I'm uh, uh, looking at actively as well for this week. So I'll be looking at that, and I'd say you know you could look at an, a 60-minute chart, and that's a, a very good time frame for looking at a knob spread. Uh, another uh, time frame that you'd want to look at is half a day, which if it's an eight-hour trading day, more or less, you're talking a 240-minute chart. And as you can see with the 240-minute chart, we have a significant trend here. So the trend is up. So what I want to see is a a double top in the market over time, or a trend line break and get this thing, you know, where we we can uh, make a nice little move. So this is, as you can see, the knob spread is a very nice trade. It's a very tradable uh, vehicle, and uh, it's going to be it's it's not. I guess you could day trade it or overnight trade it, but it's it's more of a swing uh, position trade vehicle. So. Going over real quick for scanning and planning. Let's take a look at um, a little sentiment reading that I, I, I like to look at. All right, I created a uh, scan feature here. I wanted to find out how many stocks are near their 52-week high in the S&P 500, and we only got 79. How many stocks are near their 52-week low? Not many. That's strange. How many stocks are above their 10-day moving average? Uh, 60. So even uh, if you notice the first thing on the list, some of the first names on the list, uh, we've got, um, I just saw um, D.H. Horton. Uh, we talked about Pulte Home Group the other day. Um, anyway, let me get back to the builders in just a second. How about above the 20? 80 stocks above the 50. Interesting. 124 stocks are still above their 50-day moving average. So below 10, um, what we do with this, there's 435 stocks below the 10-day moving average. There are, well, I changed this settings, but for the S&P 500 below 50, 371 stocks. So we are getting the McClellan Oscillator, looking at 50-day moving averages, two different kinds of styles of analysis, we're starting to see some stocks getting to an area that are, that are a little bit oversold. Now, let me go over and talk about three, three things. We looked at uh, the home builders, and uh, there's, um, we also talked about commercial real estate. So let's take a technical look. This is the IYR. All right, this is the real estate ETF. And um, as you can see, it is trying to do maybe a longer term uh, bottom. And as we talked yesterday, what's interesting here is on a monthly basis, some people might suggest that this could be a shoulder head shoulder. If it's a failed head and shoulder, it's a continuation pattern. So we also had a monthly high close doji in the IYR. So on a longer term um, outlook, the real estate uh, investment um, ETF is looking fairly bullish um, as long as we hold, again, this level, which is around 62, two bucks in here. So we want to watch the IYR. One other one I want to pay attention to is MORT. So I don't know what the you know, as far as the mortgage, now this is a newer ETF, so we don't have a lot of history in here, right? But I wanted to look at the, the kind of the trending, and I want to see if this market truly is bearish than at the overall stock market. If we are coming to a crash, then what would be the, the first sector to go would be mortgage and real estate. And so looking at this weekly uh, chart, as long as we are holding above last week's lows, we've got a, a consecutive series of higher lows. It's not going anywhere, but it's not falling either. Last but not least is the ITB. 
and looking at the ITB, which is the actual home builder ETF, um, man, I mean, that's kind of holding up fairly well in light of yesterday's and, and this whole last week's uh, decline in the market. So there is some pockets of strength in the market, and I wouldn't be um, all that uh, negative and looking for the crash of the new millennium. So we'll be paying attention to the stock market and its market internals in certain sectors to see if we can get some unhidden strengths and some, um, some areas of, of trading opportunities there. All right, so that concludes today's um, planning and scanning. Um, we're going to be watching the IR, uh, IYR, the MORT, and the ITB. We want to look at the home builders and mortgage REITs. We want to look at the real estate investment trusts, and um, utilities are still strong. We will go over on a daily basis what sectors to see if we get a, a, a sector rotational shift in the market as it is right now. Uh, I, I don't see um, inherent overall weakness that tells me to Katie bar the door, we're going down. It's Armageddon in the financial markets. So I do not see that quite yet. With that said, I hope you uh, found today's information useful and helpful, and uh, we'll see.